Book Two, Some Time Before Will Died, Chapter One. October one year later smelled of the same dead leaves. Will bought an overcoat at a thrift store, unworn, thirty bucks. His friend Lizard found it in the last rack in the back, the wallflower. He went out to the bars in a London fog, down past his knees, his father's black chrome watch on his wrist, bandana tied round his head. The prototypical corporate girls at the bars learning how to be fancy, warehouse chic, scrub clean, turned their heads and shone down on him sly yellow smiles he undressed with curses they read in his eyes. He couldn't care for them. They blinded him, and his inattention fell on others, girls who turned and showed him the love. And that's when he found, finally, hopefully not to fade in and out, a rock, an anchor, a foundation. And he could talk, had something to say, and didn't mind shutting up if no one wanted to listen. The proto-chic guys and gals no longer made him angry the way they once had. He no longer had to bust his knuckles up and bloody on miscommunication. He wouldn't have to take the bandana off his head to wrap around his fist for the night. Leave it on and shake the salt or lick it and drink some more. May wake up in the morning with a ringing in your ears, but that was your own vice, Lord. Fall grew more beautiful with the knowledge of itself burned in leaves. They were dying for her, the leaves, and for anyone with eyes to see, they burned in passionate bands of color, the foremost of which had been the color of her hair before she had bleached it, the natural, the auburn. The cool Canadian air in the stream woke the world up and knees hit the ground followed by elbows, folks on their bellies to light the pilots of boilers. And all the bullshit arguments people preached out every day, all day, in the hard but bearable summer heat, on the buses, in the trains, on stoops, before barber shops, quit. For the sake of his ears and eyes, they were taken inside. And he could sit on his couch with the music turned off and the television off in the other room and alone, raccoon on the cold back stairs, thankful for fur, and have a good laugh or a good cry. It rained too hard in the spring. Then one night, when he could not bear to be 26 and sober, got fucked up by himself and the girl who would never slam his gate and make it rattle again, who he heard hit the main line a month earlier, came like a poisoned dart into his heart and his mind. And he sat on the couch and thought of her through images, remembered lots of ocean and road mirage, and could not understand anything, and brought his feet up on the edge of the couch and threw his elbows on them, and the polyester blue sweatpants with a tiger sewn in them, and the white line down each side, and cried in quick, narrow breaths without tears. He wouldn't call Cass, though. He wanted to push her and scream. What's the matter with you? What's the matter, Cass? Are you going to nod through life? and two lives instead of one? He was out of hers. Everybody was. Still, he wanted to pick up that phone. He wondered how many of her so-called friends were honest and angry with her, too, the ones that didn't carry needles. Once you're in with a crowd, you don't give any bullshit to the others in. Not a soul will confess hypocrisy on the earth. Crowds always weaker than they appear, less substantial. Many deep, so many asleep, like dropped guards, abandoned thought. Miserable people love company. They need shoulders to cry on. They have all the time in the world to empathize. Being there for one another is their collective fucking life. 